It's a good day to brew, baby. What is up here, dude? It's your boy, Miss, back the hometown commander. And we are back for our fifth and final uh, pre con uh, Millsy Brews episode. We are doing the saved, I would say the best for last, but it, honestly, it ended up being the best for last. To be honest, I, I actually didn't expect this deck to be as good as I kind of thought it was going to be. Um, uh, and on the on the set's first release, I wasn't high on Incubate, but after brewing this deck, I'm going to be 100% honest, it, it, it ends up being a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Today's commander is brim as Blight of Oreskos, two white black for a 3-4 legendary creature cat. Phyrexian. Whenever you cast a Phyrexian creature or artifact creature spell, Incubate X, where X is that spell's mana value. So anytime we cast a Phyrexian creature or artifact spell, creature spell, Incubate X. Okay. At the beginning of each end step, if Phyrexian died under your control this turn, proliferate. That's the ability that we're going to try to take the most advantage of. At the beginning of each end step, each turn, if a Phyrexian died this turn, proliferate. We have set our entire deck up to create either Mites, Incubates, or other creatures or creature tokens. And we're going to look to on everyone's turn sacrifice one of our those one of those tokens, and at the end of each turn proliferate. And there's other ways for us to proliferate in the deck. It's not like we're just relying on Brimaz to pro proliferate, but um, we're going to try to get a couple poison counters on everyone, either through effects or through combat with our mites or our toxic creatures, and then we're going to proliferate our opponents out for game. That is the goal. And before we jump into this deck, uh, I was actually, like I said, very impressed with this deck. I think it's a ton of fun. Um, I'm, I, I would be excited to try this deck, honestly, hard stop. But uh, the one thing I think I'm going to do before I try this deck is... Uh, last set for XRLB1, um, I was tinkering around with a Vishgraz list, and Vishgraz was a commander that I really liked. I just felt like I couldn't find it, the list I wanted. It just felt only like a like a combo deck, and I just felt like I couldn't get the footing. But I actually really think I like the idea of taking this Brimaz core and getting it into Vishgraz, adding the green, adding some more of the cards. So that deck is actually coming. I'm going to do another video on Vishgraz where I take this deck core and I pull it into three colors. If you're interested in that, that video is coming. But I just wanted to let you know that that was an idea I had, and by brewing this deck, I really got to see... Um, that getting into the mana base we're not playing really anything sexy we do have the the uh we do have the uh ink moth nexus which just it becomes a creature with infect so it can help us get those counters to our opponents karn's bastion got a great reprint in the pre and we get it back here to be able to proliferate i love things like the seed core we're playing a lot of friction creatures so this is going to tap for anything for us we are playing the Phyrexian Tower. Just get a little bit of mana for our creatures if we need that extra little boost of mana. All right, getting up into the enchantments. We get to play some enchantments in this deck that I probably wouldn't play in that Vishgrash version of it, but I get I, I really like them. The first of those is Sculpted Perfection. When it is a battlefield, we just incubate two, and then we just get a flat plus one, plus one to all our Phyrexians. I like this because we're getting the incubate token and we're getting the plus one, plus one. It's going to be a little bit more expensive than I'd like. I'd rather... Pay, have it be like like uh, Radiant Destiny mana for getting us that plus one plus one, but I like Radiant Destiny because it also gives us Vigilance, and then if we have Phyrexian Awakening, when it comes in, we incubate four, and all of our Phyrexians have Vigilance. This is great for our Flyers because then they can block as well, and this is great for any of our creatures with Infect because then they're going to be terrible blockers for our opponents to attack into. And we're playing Etchings of the Chosen. It's one of my favorite uh, tribal enchantments. When it comes in, we use a creature type. All of our creature types of that type gets plus one, plus one. So obviously, we're going to choose Phyrexian because as soon as our incubate tokens flip, they're going to get even bigger. And then one sacrifice creature of the chosen type, target creature you control gains indestructible in a turn. Um, the hope here is that we can protect from a board wipe by making some of our important Phyrexians uh, indestructible. Or if we have to attack and our opponents try to block to kill it, uh, we can sacrifice some creatures off and keep that creature alive. Annoying procession to double up our tokens, black uh, marking connection to double the draw and treasures for value. Phyrexian Reclamation to get our Phyrexians back from the graveyard for pretty darn cheap. Scrub's Hive is going to help start making us those toxic tokens. We're playing Annoying Procession and Mondrax, so we'll be able to double up those hopefully and get uh, more than just one of them. But I really like the bottom ability. As soon as your opponent has, as soon as a opponent has three or more poison counters, all of your creatures with toxic have lifelink, and we have lots of creatures with toxic, so that's going to be helpful for us. And then the tithe uh, for some ramp. Getting up into the artifacts, we've got a great mix here of mana artifacts, but then some artifacts that just make us care about proliferating. So for mana artifacts, we have arcane signet, glistening sphere, Orzhov signet, soul ring, talisman hierarchy, astral cornucopia is. 
a mana artifact. But the best part about Astral Cornucopia is when we're proliferating, we'll get to add more counters onto Astral Cornucopia and make it tap for even more mana. So this becomes even better the longer the game goes, the more we're proliferating because we can put counters, more counters on it and get more mana. Bit of Thorn, this is Animus, just seems like a great card coming down, getting us basic lands when that creature uh, attacks. Um, of course, we can take this off of the germ that it creates with Living Weapon and put it on any other creature we want. Uh, the turn it comes down. So for six mana, the turn it comes down. We could attach it to something else and attack right away to get the token. Uh, but I just kind of like that it is a Frexian germ, the token that's created. So we do actually get a benefit. Same thing with Nettle Cyst. It makes a zero zero black Phyrexian germ. So it is actually a Phyrexian creature that gets uh, that, that that gets created. So it will help with all of our you know Phyrexian. Um, Synergies. The other best part here is we can then sacrifice that germ if we need to, and then we still have the equipment laying around for when we need it. Herald's Horn is going to reduce our uh, Phyrexians. That is going to be our choice, obviously. Phyrexian Altar is going to allow us to sack some of those incubator tokens once they get flipped over or some of our mites for mana. Skull Clamp is going to allow us to clamp those small tokens to help us draw. Sort of Truth and Justice, when it, when it deals combat damage to a player, we put a counter on it, proliferate, that's going to help us proliferate those counters, and then Throne of Geth, just sack, tap an artifact, and proliferate. This is great, because then we can sacrifice those incubate tokens, whether on the front or back side. So that's what I like about Throne of Geth, and it's a card that works great in this style of deck. Getting up in the instance and the sorceries, I wanted to try my best to avoid some of the high price, um, cards but I, I felt like enlightened tutor was really important for this deck there's so many artifacts and enchantments we really care about so i wanted to keep it in here same thing with like diabolic content it's a it's a tutor but it requires a sacrifice creature we don't mind doing that because it can satisfy brim as it can satisfy a lot of other things so i really like it i think they both work really well but the one thing we need to do as well as get poison counters on our opponents infectious inquirer is a little more than i would normally pay for a draw spell but the difference is each opponent gets a poison counter when we do it so that's that could start our proliferate train pretty easily same thing with freezes outbreak each opponent gets a poison counter uh, poison counter and then each opponent's creature gets minus one minus one until in turn for each poison counter its controller has well this is a way to start every opponent off with a poison counter if need be we'd rather do it through combat we'd rather get some more benefit out of getting all our opponents some poison counters but this is a way to do it if we need to to get them all and then sunfall seems like a really great board way especially if we have no creatures or we only have tokens on the battlefield we don't mind sun falling getting rid of all those creatures into exile and then getting a big incubate token that we can flip later same thing with white sun's twilight um get rid of all the creatures and we get we get the things that that help us and hurt our opponents in the process so i love it for removal anguished on making deadly rollick uh, Exile is the Imperfect seems kind of interesting. Exile target on land permanent. Its controller incubates X, where X is its mana value. Hopefully our opponent can't use that incubate token for any big value, and we can just kind of completely lock out. This seems like a great, almost strict upgrade to something like Generous Gift, because it exiles the permanent instead of destroying it, which is actually going to help us a lot more out. Uh, but we are still, of course, playing the Generous Gift because we still need the we still need the removal. I think it's going to be one of the biggest things for us, Path and Swords. And then we're playing Vraska's Fall. Again, another way to give each of our opponents a poison counter, but they have to sacrifice a creature or Planeswalker in the process. We talk about Flawless Maneuver for some protection. And then Delhi Dispute can help us on our opponent's turn, sack something on our opponent's turn, get the card and the treasures, get the two cards and the treasure, and then we would be able to get a Bremaz trigger as well. So I like... Um, Again, I, I love the idea that this deck seems to be just flowing really well. We have a bunch of effects that give us tokens. We have a bunch of effects that give our opponents poison counters. And then we're going to find a ton of ways to proliferate. Moving up into the creatures, and this is probably my favorite part of the deck. And just one, look at all those beautiful Icar uh, tree bins for a lot of these creatures. Absolutely gorgeous. I think it looks so good. But I think every creature in this deck really feels like it belongs. It has a spot, and it's going to help us out. Um... We'll talk about our one Planeswalker really quick, and that's Vraska Betrayal Sting. Uh, zero to draw a card and lose a life and proliferate. This is great because we can just proliferate in our turn. We can do that at the beginning of our turn. We can do that at the second main. There's a lot of great ways to do this. The minus two makes a target creature become a treasure and loses all other types and abilities. We can do this to our opponent's creatures, or we can do this to our own creatures, turning them into a treasure if we need some extra mana. And then minus nine. If a target player has fewer than nine poison counters, they get a number of poison counters equal to the difference, and then we could potentially proliferate them out and end the game once they get those poison counters. But um, 
just like with every episode of Millsy Bros, the deck list is going to be down in the description. I'm going to go by every creature. I'm going to go through every creature on this list one by one and talk about my hopes for them in the deck and why they're in there. If you don't want to watch that and you just want to see the deck list, the deck list is down there in the description. Let me know what you think down in the comments, but let's rock into the creatures. Aaron Benalia's Ruin is a card I didn't really see until I was going through Scryfall searching for Phyrexians, and it says tap... White and a black tap, sacrifice another creature, put a counter on each creature you control. Well, this is killer because all of our incubator counters are, tokens already have counters on them. But think about it. Some creatures are going to come down and not have any counters on them at all. So the great part about Aaron is we sacrifice, put a counter on everything. And at the end of the turn or for some of our other creatures, they're going to go ahead and proliferate those counters and give them more. So I like it. Aaron isn't the best card on its own. But what I think it is, it's going to help us a ton that we're already trying to do. Here's a card that, to be 100% honest, is not fantastic in a lot of other decks, but in a deck like this, I think it's a killer card, and it's very cheap at the moment because it's not being played in standard. And this bloated processor, sacrifice another Phyrexian, put a counter on it. Well, now we can sacrifice it on everyone's turn. I think this plus Brimaz is going to get us exactly to where we want this deck to be, sacrificing tokens on everybody else's turns and just turning it out. And then when it dies, we incubate X, where X is the number, where X is its power. So if it dies, we get that big incubator token back. I love Bloated Processor. I think it's a great sack outlet for the sack. We have a couple sack outlets in the deck, but I think this is a great one for it. Completed Huntmaster, another one of our sack outlets. One tap, sacrifice another creature artifact so we can sack a Might token. Or we can sack a non-transformed uh, incubator token, and then we incubate three. So this is great because we could turn some little incubator tokens into threes, or we can just recycle incubate tokens and get those death triggers that come along with it. Drivnod, Carnage, Dominus. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Uh, this will not um, double Brimaz because this is talking about triggered abilities and not... Uh, that so this won't i don't believe this doubles brim as his ability but this will double um everything else like a loss ill core whenever a creature you control enters the battlefield we gain a life but whenever a creature we control dies his opponent loses a life this will double a loss ill core i think the only way that we can make this deck better and i just wasn't sure where to fit it in uh, to this deck would be bringing more of the Bastion of Remembrance, Meat Hook Massacre type um aristocrat cards into the deck and then you could kind of uh ping your opponents out while you're proliferating i think that would be the, a, a way to take this deck if you wanted to but what i wanted to try to do was stick a little bit more into phyrexian tribal and kind of see if i could find a better way to round out the deck but i think if i were to build this for myself i would probably like i say pull out a couple cards put more into that aristocrat strategy and go all out we have multiple elish horns in the deck it, um, to be honest it, it was pretty tough not to play all three uh, i just couldn't find I honestly couldn't find a complete use for Mother of Machines. Like, yes, the card is fantastic. It's it's a 4-7 for 5 mana. It'd be great for what it is. But I don't have a ton of ETB triggers um, because uh, uh, Brimaz is on cast. I mean, the only real ETB trigger in the deck I can think of is Essence of Orthodoxy. So uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do as far as that goes. But Elishnorn, whenever opponents... Source on Pokemon controls deals damage to a player, to you or a permanent we control that source's controller loses two life unless they pay one. Um, the big thing this is going to help for us is this. If we attack and our opponents block, for each creature they block with, they lose two life or pay a mana. And that's going to be helpful when we start having toxic creatures and, and infect creatures attacking them that could potentially end the game for them. That requires them to make the decision. Do I block and risk losing life or do I let it go and hopefully lose less life and potentially take toxic counters and things like that? And when we flip her over, the backside becomes one of the best cards in this deck. Top one, incubate two five times, and then transform all incubator tokens you control. Now we have creatures, and we can sacrifice them right away for effects or do a lot of other things. On the two creatures you control, get plus one, plus one, and gain double strike until in turn. Now we can attack for free, and if those tokens have toxic, we have a chance of getting lots of toxic damage into our opponents, or opponent just has to deal with two twos or three threes with double strike which are even harder to block than a regular two twos or three threes and then destroy all other permanents except artifacts lands and phyrexians and that's most of our deck most of our deck is going to be artifacts lands or phyrexians so it's going to be a one-sided board wipe and then we get elish nerd back i love this card this card fits perfectly for this deck it's it's almost even better than most of the other um praetors for this for this deck this is almost the best of all of them but we are also playing elish nerd grand cenobite the original one because a flat buff to our creatures and a flat minus to our opponent's creatures could 
produce a situation where we're able to just end the game outright because our creatures are just big enough and they're going to be hard enough to deal with. Um, it is seven mana, but if we can get there with a lot of other things, this is one of those cards that could potentially end us the game. Essence of Orthodoxy, whenever it or another Phyrexian enters the battlefield under your control, incubate two. So the reason I like this ability is that whenever it or another Phyrexian enters the battlefield, you incubate two. When an incubate token flips, it doesn't enter the battlefield. So that's kind of a bummer. But the cool part of this is if we're making might tokens, if we're making other Phyrexian tokens somehow, or if we're doing other things, um, this will trigger and incubate us two for every commit. So the so the kind of best part about this would be something like um would be something like Scrawl's Hive. Every turn, hopefully we're doubling it, but if we're not, we would get a one-one might and an incubate three an incubate two token. So I like this. It's just going to add some abilities. Like I said, this was the card that I most kind of wanted Phyrexia or uh, Elshar and Mother of Machines for because I think here it is where it would help us double it so much and get the most value, but I just wasn't entirely sure. Here, whenever it enters the battlefield, put a counter on any number of target creatures and a charge counter on any number of target artifacts, and we can sac sacrifice another artifact to proliferate. Again, so here, here's another one of these sack outlets where we can sacrifice an artifact, so might um, or either side of an incubator token to proliferate. And our hope is that we can just proliferate multiple times in a turn, not just once per turn. If we can proliferate as many times in a turn we can, it's going to get us even closer to ending a game. Gix, Yogmoth Praetor, uh, whatever creature we control deals common damage to one of your opponents, it's control may pay a life if they do gain a card. I realize that says whatever a creature deals damage to your opponent, so our opponents can do this as well as long as they're attacking another opponent. And then we can pay seven discard X cards that go to the top X from opponent's library. We can play lands and cast spells without paying their mana costs. That's pretty great because it gives us an option to kind of pick the right player and get a bunch of stuff off the top of their deck. Grafted Butcher seems like a really cool card, and it could be a way to finish off a game. Whenever it enters the battlefield, Frexian can control gain menace until end of turn, and they all get a flat plus one plus one. And then for four mana, we can bring it back by just um, sacrificing an artifact or creature, but we can only do it at sorcery speed. So what we could do is if Butcher's already in the graveyard or we pitched it or it's already in there, pay that four, sacrifice a creature, bring it back, and all of our creatures have menace until end of turn, and they become even harder to block. Igor Rats, another great card to just start the train off, get everybody gets poison counter, it comes in, and then it has in fact so they got to be careful they got to block it um i love masker worm it's one of my favorite creatures of all time but i had to use this printing of the card because they finally added phyrexian to it it was just a worm before now it's officially a phyrexian worm and uh if you played with the old version of the card it would still be a phyrexian worm you have to remember that anytime a creature's type has changed it's changed for every printing of the card whether the card says it on it or not so if you have friends who are playing with the m21 borderless masker worm just know that it is phyrexian and you would just have to look it up on your phone or have a uh, access to something to show them that it is phyrexian but whenever it enters the battlefield creatures your opponent's control get minus two minus two until end of turn and then whenever a creature your opponent controls dies that player loses two life um, I like this Drivenod with it because uh, Drivenod will actually double it and hurt our opponents as well. I'm not realizing that maybe Elshorn and Mother Machines deserves to be in the deck, but again, this is why we say version 1.0 deckless because, hey, we haven't tested it, we haven't figured it out, so this is the things we get to learn. Might Overseer finally found a deck for this guy. As long as it's your turn, creature tokens you control get plus one plus one, have first strike. This is great for all our incubator tokens, this is great for all of our mites. It's going to make them hard to deal with and for four mana we can get a might uh, with Toxic 1. So I like that, mainly just because that first strike is going to come in handy. Mondrak, our token doubler, that's also a creature. Uh, love it. It's a Phyrexian, so we get to... Uh, to, so we get to get all the Phyrexian and some strategies as well with it, pumping it up all of our other things. And just doubling the amount of tokens is important. It's something that as we make, inc as we incubate, which makes tokens, that gets doubled. Our mites get doubled. Mondrak becomes even better in a deck like this because we get more and more benefit from it doubling. Norn Squire Master, whenever a creature, you, whenever a commander you control enters the battlefield or attacks, proliferate. Well, this is great because when Burmaz comes in, we get to proliferate, or if we can attack with it, it's going to get to proliferate. This is just going to become beneficial over time. As it comes in, if it gets killed, it comes back in again, we get to proliferate again. Um, I'm trying to add in the deck as many ways to proliferate that don't just involve sacrificing a creature once per turn. And I think this is a good way to do it. Norns Inquisitor, when it comes in, we incubate two. And then whenever another permanent you control transforms into a Phyrexian and put a counter on it. So this is going to basically increase all of our incubator tokens by one because when they incubate and they transform, they're going to get that plus one, plus one counter. So I like it. I think it's useful. And it's just a one, one body that's going to end up just getting pumped by our other Phyrexian abilities. Phyrexian Sensor. The last thing the Phyrexians needed was a stacks piece. And we got one Phyrexian Sensor. Each player can't cast more than one non-Phyrexian spell each turn. This is going to hurt us slightly because some of our spells, of course, aren't tagged as Phyrexian, but I don't think we mind that once you realize 
uh, the good that this can do. And what we can do is we can just play an entire turn out and then play this last and then lock the rest of our opponents down. And then non friction creatures enter the battlefield tap. That's going to help us in combat because all of our opponents are going to come in tapped and they're not going to be able to block for the shenanigans we're doing. Frexian Delver, when it comes in, return turn creature from your graveyard to the battlefield, you lose life equal to that card's mana value. This is going to help us recurse some of our big creatures and get them back so we can use them again. We're playing the pair of our uh, the pair the pair of our horrors, the old one and the new one. The old one, Frexian Obliterator, just got reprinted in Frexian Obi One. Trample whenever a source deals damage to it, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. This is going to be a big blocker, or I'm sorry, a big attacker, and it seems like a perfect um, creature to staple, like a like a Phoresis or a Necrogen Communion, you know, something to give it the ability to just deal some damage on it. Uh, that would be a way we could go as well. But yeah, having Trample makes it pretty tough to deal with and that no one's going to want to block this thing because no one wants to have to sacrifice. And that doesn't say non-land friends. So if someone has to block this with a with a creature and they don't have anything but lands, they do have to sacrifice lands. And I love the Accursed Treatment. There. And then we're playing Vindicator as well. Whenever it's self-damage, prevent that damage. When damage is prevented that way, it does that damage to any other target. I like this, and the reason I kind of like this is if you could get Infect or Toxic onto the Vindicator with another ability, when it deals that damage, it will deal the Toxic counter. So this, again, another great target for Necrogen Communion or um, Phoresis because it will take that damage and turn it into just straight poison counters with Infect or, you know, the, the Toxic. So uh, I like both of these cards. The quad pips make it a little bit harder to get down, uh, but I think both of them are great forces in their own right. Progenitor Exarch, XX White. When it comes in, incubate three X times and then just tap to transfer, transform an incubator token you control. Um, I like it. It's kind of interesting. Of course, the more mana we put into it, the more incubators we get. But even with one doubler, I still feel like for three mana, getting two, two incubate threes is still just pr pretty darn good. So I like that. Shieldred, uh, the new Shieldred, probably my pick for the one I'm kind of the least confident in of all the new Praetors, but I put in here because it's a Phyrexian, and at the end of the day, we're going Phyrexian Tribal. When there's a battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature or Planeswalker, and then we can flip it over into for each opponent, destroy up to one target creature or Planeswalker that player controls. The two is each opponent discards three cards, then mills three cards, and then the three is put all creatures from the graveyard under the battlefield under your control. They don't get haste, but you to bring them all back. I mean, Shieldred is here for the three on the backside. If we can wait that long, get it moving. I think it's such a great card. Otherwise, maybe it comes out for a different Phyrexian that gets us more value. Uh, another card, just because I feel like we need to hurt our opponents, and this one does a certain good job at it, Shieldred the Apocalypse. Man, what a price tag for this card at the moment. Whenever you draw a card, you gain two life. Whenever an opponent draws a card, they lose two life. Shieldred's just a great card. It has Death Touch, another great card to put... Um, to put toxic or infect on because it's just going to become even harder to deal with but i like this card it's going to hurt our opponents over time and it's just going to allow us to gain good value we're playing skittles skittles is back skittle got the reprint in, in multiverse legend skithrix the blight dragon three and two black for a four four flying infect so just straight infect on it for a black he gets haste until the turn and for two black we regenerate it uh, what a what a great card um skithrix is exactly what we want for a deck like this it has infect it's going to help us get counters on our opponents we can spread sk skittles around and get damage on everybody and then start proliferating and the cool part about it having infect is we can start someone with four pose encounters a lot less needed to be proliferated um but i like skittles so glad it got reprinted brings the price way down for this one so people can finally get it it had never been reprinted before i love that and then screll screll's such a great card screll's seeing so much playing commander and i'm so happy that um we get to see fun cards like this get play uh and now we see it here in this deck as well toxic one it can't block and then one frexian white tap choose a color another target creature you control against toxic one and hexproof from that color until end of turn can't be blocked by creatures of that color in this turn so i like that you have an opponent maybe who's got creatures that all share a color type give that creature toxic one get it in get that poison counter started so we can get the proliferate train rolling well, what do you guys think of brimaz like i said i was very intrigued by this one this is a deck that seemed like a ton of fun. Like I said, my intention is to try to get this Fishgrass deck idea rolling and do some more uh, testing with that. It's a deck that I think I just care a little bit more about because I like some of the green that you get access to. Um, Tyranix Rex, Vorn Clex. I just feel like as we bring some of that in, we get a little bit more access. We get more token doublers. I just feel like we get uh, better removal as well. I just feel like we get so many great things by going into three colors. So I think that's where I'm going to start. And then if I can't get that deck where I want it, I will probably fall back to Brimaz because I like where this is. We can spin it a little bit more aristocrats and have a little bit more fun. But let me know what you guys think of Brimaz down in the comments. Uh, deck list is in the description. Like if you like the video. Subscribe.
if you want to join me on my quest down brewing magic channel ne- favorite magic channel next week starts march of the machine the aftermath and i cannot wait to start brewing some of that stuff um i have already a few cards that i pointed out that i want to brew and there are already a few cards that are going to go in some other decks so uh hopefully you guys have, have found something from aftermath you enjoy and we'll be opening some of it up on the channel but thank you guys so much for watching and i will catch you next time